This video is an introduction to the administration of the Atomic Automation Solution. For the most part, this means configuring certain core aspects of the products not directly associated with IT operations. These functions are accessible in the administration perspective. This includes access and security. Administrators manage users and the groups they belong to, their passwords, authorizations, privileges, and anything related to their level of access. It also encompasses running the physical infrastructure. In this, we find adding, starting, and stopping agents and agent groups, controlling active connections, and supervising engine processes for performance. It further includes the functional architecture, mainly clients and client permissions, client users, and client queues. Finally, there's a few other functions that we do not cover, like cache and exits. Administration of the solution extends beyond security and infrastructure. There are also functional components like default values and holiday calendars, which are not unique to individual deployments and are instead common to all of them. These aspects are federated for all users and clients and therefore under the purview of the administrator. Default values obviously fall in this category. Administrators can set the auto refresh cycle and find the right balance between performance and convenience the cycles with which conditions are checked, and much more. Dashboards can be designed and then made available universally to the entire system. Holiday calendars for every country also fall in this category. Because these functions impact design and configuration, they're found in the process assembly perspective. One important aspect of administration is the role of clients. Atomic Automation offers the ability to be subdivided into multiple distinct environments called clients with assigned numbers. Client 0 is the administrative clients. System-wide configuration is stored here and then distributed to other clients. Administration is required at the level of each operational client and in Client 0. As such, the administration and process assembly perspectives show different types of data based on whether we're in Client 0 or another. To log into Client 0, we use UC for all authentication fields. The first thing you notice is that we're logged into Client 0. We open the administration perspective and show some of the available information. One of the more important aspects of administration is security and user management. We provide a quick overview of these functions by creating a new user and show how to enable that user in the automation environments. We're able to lock users temporarily or disable them entirely. User management comes with traditional password functionality like setting, change at next login, and expiration. The automation engine page contains two subpages, authorizations, and privileges. Authorizations are active permissions for a user, read, write, and execute which can then be fine-tuned for specific object types or certain agents. For example, without read authorization, the user is unable to open objects. Privileges, on the other hand, allow or deny use of interface components and specific functions. For example, you could prevent a user from being able to open a perspective. So we have created a new user and it is assigned to client 0, which doesn't do much good. For a user to be able to work in the solution, it needs to be assigned to a client. So we move the user. Administration tools provide an easy way to see who is currently connected to the system and where. The 
The Clients page shows the clients, the number of objects existing in each, and activities, in other words, the volume of operational data. Note that using this tool, the administrator is able to stop a client, suspending all workload operations. This shows the list of agents for the entire system. This is another convenient tool. It provides the ability to stop an agent, effectively ending processing for that system or application. If a connection is lost, we're able to renew the transfer key to allow the engine to identify and reconnect with the agent. The engine management page has three subpages processes and utilization, database, and system upgrades. In this page, we're able to control communication and workload processes. We can stop and even delete them. The bottom part of the screen shows utilization of the system based on time. The database page shows basic information for the repository database. Let's consider the information found in the process assembly perspective. By default, Client 0 contains a fairly substantial number of folders, which in turn contain all the data necessary to manage configurations and IT operations for the entire system. Let's consider some of them. The Holiday Calendar folder is a good example of system-wide configuration data. It contains calendars for all major countries in the world, and in each calendar, we find public and known holidays specific to each country. We know that New Year's Eve in the UK is not going to change, whether we're working on Client 100 or 200. Therefore, this information is stored centrally on Client 0 and is usable by all of the clients. In every operational client, we're going to find a UC Client Settings Vara object, and we will show this variable object later when we explore Client 100. Since we are in Client 0, UC Client Settings is less relevant than UC System Settings, which is this Vara object. Fundamentally, the two are not that different. UC Client Settings contains settings for the entire client. This includes default values for things like log size limits and refresh cycles. Because Client 0 offers no operational functionality, here we look at UC System Settings, which contains values for the entire system. We're now in Client 100. Let's compare the administration and process assembly perspectives with what we saw for Client 0. We only see Client 100. None of the other clients are visible. Client settings are found in the No Folder area of the menu. In the clients, there is far less administration data. We can configure user languages, templates, and UC Client settings. The client has a few settings, although we're able to add more based on certain requirements.